Okay, boys and girls, today we're talking about my top picks for backpacking knives to carry while you are out in the backcountry. So today we're going to be looking at a little bit of everything. I have a couple fixed blades, a couple a little bit more budget-oriented blades, and a couple of my essential top picks, though they are a little bit more expensive. So we're going to start off with the fixed blades first. So while fixed blades are not my favorite, or small fixed blades are not my favorite to carry in the field because they have a little bit of a lack of use usefulness or they little can be a little bit cumbersome for what they offer. These two are kind of my go-tos and overall pretty solid options. So the first is the SC Azula. Mine is slightly modified because I did flatten the spine on this guy, remove the jimping, and make it so that it can strike a ferro rod for fire starting purposes. So I sharpened the spine, removed the jimping, and uh, you guys can see there, removed the coating off of a good chunk of the back of the blade. But aside from that, it's still an SC Azula 2 with this kind of black wash look to it. I think it looks pretty awesome, especially from the sideline or from that side shot. It is pretty cool looking. But above all, it is a really functional, very useful fixed blade. It's going to be very durable and overall very usable in the field, whether you're trying to just open packages, start a fire, an isobutane stove, like or the pocket rocket from MSR, you know, this thing is going to work very well for you in a wide variety of different situations. Of course, the fixed blade is going to give you a added durability. So, you know, if you had to do some light batoning, you know, it's going to be something a little bit safer to do than with a folding blade. So it's a good fixed blade. It's also not terribly expensive, but it is not terribly cheap. Uh, Azula 2s usually come in at about 70-ish dollars, if I remember correctly. So and that is the first First choice, the SC Azula 2. Next to that is a slightly smaller blade, the Topps MSK or Mini Scandi Knife. And this one is in tan and black, but it comes in a plethora of different uh, colorations. But this one, once again, is a little bit smaller, but same philosophy. It is also, I have modified it. To, I have also modified it to sharpen the spine so it'll throw sparks from a ferro rod. But in addition to that, uh, it is also full tang, and it is a, another durable blade that you can baton the heck out of, within reason, of course, it is a pretty small blade, but you can baton it, use it to start fires, do some feather sticking, general camp tasks, open packages, you know, uh, your pre-cooked food, or your meals ready to eat, you know, your MREs, uh, this will take care of any of those generalized tasks pretty handily. So that is the... MSK or Mini Scandi Knife by Tops, and uh, it is a pretty good fixed blade option. So really both of these, really both of these, if you're looking for a smaller fixed blade option to carry, that's not going to weigh you down too much. Both of them are pretty solid picks from pretty solid companies. Okay, so let's take a look at the kind of more budget offerings for folders. So the first one, and this one is a little bit more expensive, but depending on what you options you get it in. The Spyderco Para 3 is, you know, around $100, maybe $110-ish, and this one is in a pretty base configuration. It has S30V as the blade, which is certainly not a bad steel, uh, and G10 handles. This blade is pretty lightweight, and the compression lock is very nice. This one is super smooth, um, but overall, um, this is a reasonably small blade and will once again be able to take care of just about anything you'll need to do in the field. One kind of one kind of additional thing is I tried to pick uh, blades that had pretty good locking mechanisms. So if you did have to baton or you did have to use your blade in a little bit more of an industrial task, the Para 3 should be able to handle it pretty well. So uh, that is the Para 3 by Spyderco, and it is a pretty small, pretty reasonable blade for backpacking. The next is a fan favorite, or personal favorite maybe, of the channel, and that is the 556 Benchmade Mini Grip. Now this one is in a teal handle. You can get it in many different types and variations. You can also get it in different types of steels. They come in, you know, just about any kind of setup you want them to, but for the sake of this conversation, this is the 154CM uh, Mini Grip 556, and this one comes in at about 65 to $70. So once again, not super, super cheap, but in the same price range as the MSK and the Azula 2. 
but it's going to be a pretty good blade. It is very compact. It is not the lightest of the folders on the table, but it is a very sturdy, very stout uh, blade. Once again, similar to the compression lock on the um, Spyderco, you know, you are going to be able to do pretty good work with this thing. I wouldn't necessarily recommend batoning it, but if you have to, you certainly can. And I have batoned uh, mini grips before, and I have just used mini grips in many different ways, uh, you know, processing game animals and doing kind of different survival tasks included. So if you do get a mini grip, you know you're getting a really solid blade that can handle just about anything that comes its way. So very solid option for a reasonable price. Okay, so the next two are a little bit more high-end and a little bit harder to get, but these two would be my absolute top picks if I'm looking for a solid backpacking knife. So we're going to start off, of course, we started off with the Spider Co. last time, we're going to start off with the Spider Co. this time, and this is the Spidey Chef by Spider Co. Now, like I said, this isn't the easiest blade to find, nor is it the cheapest, uh, coming in at about $250, but the Spider Co. Spidey Chef is probably my top recommended backpacking blade, and that is because oftentimes when you're backpacking, most of what you're really using a knife for is light camp tasks and food processing. So whether you're cutting up some vegetables or you're just processing some food to cook up and eat, that's a lot of what you're using your blade for in backpacking. And so why not pick a knife that is specifically designed as a kind of folding chef knife? You know, even the blade design itself, the kind of symmetry of it is very much akin to a traditional chef's knife. So this blade is very slicey. I have used it in a lot of food processing tasks uh, in everyday carry, and it does a fantastic job at cutting up cheeses, cutting up, you know, meats, different stuff like that. Uh, or once again, even just opening up containers and packages of food, you know, this thing does an excellent job. And the best thing about this thing is it's steel. It is LC200N, and that steel is super stainless. I mean, it is hard to get this steel to rust. Not impossible, like any steel, of course, it will rust, but it is very hard to rust and very good. Uh, for being low maintenance in the field. And so that is what I like about it. In addition to that, it is also very lightweight and being made out of full titanium, you know, it definitely helps make this thing lightweight. Is also reasonably thin, not as thin as the bug out, which we'll talk about next, but very thin and like I said, a very lightweight package to carry. So that is the Spider Co. Spidey Chef. It is my top pick, heavily recommended. Okay, so the last one that is a top pick, though, like I said, the Spidey Chef is probably number one. This is definitely a solid number two, and that is the Benchmade 535 Bug Out. Now, this one, of course, is a exclusive. This is a Blade HQ exclusive, so this isn't the most attainable one, but Bug Outs usually run anywhere from $150 to around $200, and if you were to try to get a similarly spec'd out bug out uh, to this one, though this one was a limited edition, uh, you'd probably be paying around $200. That said, this is an incredibly lightweight uh, blade, and that is essentially what the bug out kind of prides itself on, is being very lightweight and, you know, very thin. So once again, you're getting a very slicey blade that should be very good for processing uh, food and also, you know, being very lightweight to carry, you know, throwing in a pocket and just forgetting about it. So this one in particular comes in 20 CV for the blade steel or CPM 20 CV. And this steel is very good, you know, very uh, or reasonably corrosion resistant, holds an edge for a long time and is a very good steel. I would try to recommend going for like an S90V or a 20 CV blade steel from, for a bug out, and if I was going to go with a bug out, I'd recommend going for a higher end bug out. Uh, if nothing else, you know, get a good blade steel and then maybe put some aftermarket handle scales on it. But either way, this is a fantastic backpacking knife and it should be able to handle just about any task that comes your way. This one, like I said, is a about 150, but usually 
uh, with these types of materials. So this blade cost me about $150, but usually with these types of materials, you could be expecting to pay around $200 to $175 for a bug out. So once again, definitely a little bit higher end, but definitely encourage and recommend the bug out. It is a solid knife. The Omega Springs have worked very well for me. Haven't broken, haven't had any issues. I hard deploy this thing all the time. Uh, just a fantastic blade for backpacking and the backcountry as a whole. So awesome blade. You would definitely love it um, either way. So anyways, those are the knives for backpacking that I recommend, whether they're fixed blades or folders. These are definitely the top picks for me. Um, <clears throat> So these are definitely the top picks for me. Of course, if you guys have any recommendations, don't forget to leave them in the comments below. I would definitely appreciate it. I'm sure other viewers will as well, but this is my perspective and this is what I recommend. So as always guys, God bless and I'm out.